Hello, everyone. We are chilling in studio. Got my husband on the co-host, Mike. How we doing, honey? I'm doing good, hon. How you doing? I'm great. And I'm so excited for our guest today. She has been on the podcast in the past. This was so long ago. I was like six months pregnant. But welcome back. <laughs> Two shenanigans, Lindsay Palos. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm I, I always feel like the like Bravo uh, fan VIP. Like I've managed to meet all you guys. Oh my today. God, I love that. And I'm like, everyone listening should be very jealous. <laughs> jealous. Yeah. Well, I'm so happy to have you back here. I want to catch up on how everything is going over the past year and a half, almost, God, almost two years. That's so wild. Crazy. Mm -hmm. it, time flies. I've had a whole human. I know things on your vision board have come to fruition. And yeah. I just want to get in on all of that, catch up, and yeah. Let's do it. I'm excited. I'm down. Let's get into it. Honey? Yes, ma'am. You want to kick us off? Well, I guess the first one is, let's tell everybody, we've, we've introduced you obviously two years ago, Yeah. but there's some fun facts that I didn't know about, and that was, you know, where are you from, and how did you end up in LA? Because you went to LSU. Yeah, graduated from Ooh, LSU. Death, mm -hmm. Is that Death Valley? De yeah, that's what, is, how did you know that? Yeah, well, that's we call I, it Death Valley. When I first moved over here, I was in Phoenix training, and I ended up training with Odell Beckham. From LSU, oh, the Honey Badger, we called him. No, that was that was that's Todd. That was, honey Badger is. Oh, you're uh, right. You're right. Tyrone Matthew. Matthew. Tyrone Matthew. Shit. But yeah, that was, but he was a year uh -oh. first. Damn, LSU's getting. It's mm -hmm. okay. I'll we had a lot of football drama in that town. You did. Yes. Wow. I was Jordan Jefferson days. You remember that? No. Oh man, good times. But yeah, a lot of football drama at LSU. And then you went from Louisiana to Cali. Yes. How what, how old were you when you came over here? Twenty three. How was, how was that? It was pretty crazy. I um I had graduated from LSU. I was still bartending at the time. And this was when Instagram kind of just started. Mm -hmm. And I was posting on Instagram and I would get like, you know, 5,000 followers a week. And at, at the time I ended up with like 250,000 followers and I was doing some modeling here and there. And I'm like, I can't live and die in Louisiana. Like, yeah. not that it's, you know, that's a lovely way to live if that's what you want. But in my head, I was like, nah, this isn't going to make sense. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, if I'm going to bartend and model, why don't I go to Vegas? And then it, somehow that turned into L.A. L.A. seemed like the harder choice, which seemed like the right choice. So yeah. then I moved to L.A. I had $3,000 left from my bartending budget after I'd paid for the moving truck and whatever else I had paid for. Um, so yeah, I struggled for like two years in this town and it was hard, but we made it. Tell us, <laughs> we about, made it. It. Tell us yeah. about the struggles. What was like, like Oh my god. Yeah, because I because LA people come to LA because it's expensive you come into Toronto. AF. Yeah. Totally. And a, yeah, and a lot of people I mean, it, this is one of the most expensive places to live in the world. The rent is crazy. And I moved here and I thought like, oh, I'll get a bartending job, which I did. But making, you know, one fifty to two hundred dollars a night isn't really gonna cut like a seventeen fifty rent. Yeah, no. And I, I don't know how I even just survived. And there was actually this funny story. One time I was hanging out with Dan Bilzerian and we went to this like crazy guy's house late at night and he loved to golf. And he was like, I like to hit my golf balls off my yard and hit them into these like mega mansions down the hill or whatever. And he goes, or... isn't that crazy? He had a whole setup and there were these beautiful girls there with Dan and he goes, if any of you girls can hit the golf ball into the yard, and it was actually a celebrity's yard, but I don't want to say it, just I don't want to give him trouble. Oh my gosh. But he said, if you can hit the golf ball into the yard, I'll give you $2,000. That is, that's right. You're like, I'm hitting that's that rain. golf ball. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I need this. And I was like, <laughs> let me go last. And I watched every girl, it must have been like eight girls, I watched their foot placement, I saw the swing, I like studied it as hard as I could, and I hit two of them right where I needed to hit, and I got $2,000, and that's how I paid my rent that wow. month. Wow. And I'll never forget that story my entire life, but that's that it was a struggle the yeah the struggle, struggle is real and, the, and and then the hustle is even better going last paying attention and be like okay because i'm not gonna lie when we go to top golf you do see some great swings and you yeah. see some some wild swings really? but you know but been. that is so smart of you to watch the footwork and the swing and all of that and that is one thing that i feel like a lot of people don't know by looking at you is that you are smart you are Thanks. educated mm -hmm. you are so much more than a pretty Thanks. face. And I want to get into some of that. What do you think is 
the biggest misconception about you? I think people think, uh, I mean, I hate to even bring up the B word, but people would think like I'm a bitch Mm -hmm. or mean or something. And that is so just off. It's just yeah. not my cup of... I mean, I've been underestimated my whole life. So the last thing I'd ever do is underestimate another person or gossip about another person. I don't get a kick out of talking shit. Like that is just nothing in my wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. And I'm also not um, really materialistic. I love investing in things that last and make sense, but I'm not... I don't need a ton of money. I don't need to date a rich guy. I just... every Almost everything you think that I would be, I'm completely opposite yeah so yeah and and it's definitely annoying it's hard being misunderstood all the time but that was one of our big ones because when we're asking our audience like hey what do you guys want to know and it's all like the basic bullshit that comes our way is she single so many (laughs) but it was just so many like of those comments that you know i'm sure you see all the time Mm -hmm. then there was also the one from like ken firefighter who said is she currently seeing someone and if not would she be interested in seeing someone from Canada? Maybe who's hey. a firefighter? Hey, <laughs> Canadian, eh? I am super single. Um, and speaking of people getting it wrong, I have learned like so many lessons, I think, the last few years in dating. I think that's what a lot of people, honestly, if they need to, like, if I brought any value to this world, I've been studying how to deal with guys and being in love and... I can debunk a lot of the myths about hot girls and what it takes to get a guy and how mm-hmm. to get a guy to commit. I've actually learned a ton of skills along the way. Um, Do tell. Are these, are these God, skills yeah. of how to get a guy from a single woman? Oh my God. No, wait, what? No. How to, <laughs> well, I think really in my dating history, I've dated some of the most notorious bad boys that actually are alive today. I've dated mm-hmm. Callum Best and Justin Bobby and Dan Blazerian, and I've had long relationships with these guys. So I kind of, I understand how to get a guy to commit. I kind of understand how to attract a mate, but I can also tell you exactly why they're not lasting. And, you know, I've just, I've just been out here studying. Give us some tips for the listeners, for all the single ladies out there. What are some things to look for? What are some things to do or not to do to keep a man? Oh my God. I feel like I've been waiting for this for like the last few months. Okay. Here's number one. This is like the biggest lesson that I think I've learned with all my friends dating the last few years. But women, the other team plays dirty. They play dirty as fuck. They play dirtier than our brain would even fathom that they are willing to play. Like the way they they're good at uh, weapons, you know, they're good at weapons and they'll weaponize love and a fraud and a fairy tale. I always say begin the same exact way. And you're not going to know the difference. So when you go to fall in love and when you go to attach to someone, I think it's important to keep two lenses on. You keep a lens on like, okay, this might be real. This could be lovely. But you got to keep another pair on that's like, in case this is all a fraud, Mm -hmm. I can pull the ripcord and jump out. And you have to be willing to jump out when your body and soul are already attached. Mm. And that takes a lot of discipline. That takes a lot of practice. That takes like... That takes a lot of self-love and self, courage. Self-love. Yeah. Because the way attachments work, our whole body and being think that we're not going to survive this. They think when we when we make a physiological bond, it thinks, oh, we're going to, we need this person to survive. They affect our heart rate, our sleeping patterns, everything. Mm-hmm. And so oh. your body's going to be like, you're not supposed to survive this, but you have to have your mind go, yes, I fucking can. And yeah, it's just, a, there's a whole lot of science with love. And I spend a lot of my time doing that at home. Like I'm just studying this all the time. So when I'm dating someone, I'm just collecting data. You are <laughs> just collecting I data. I love yeah. that. <laughs> I'm practicing. I'm like, I'm like, figuring this out. I'll yeah. this thesis on this one. Here we mm-hmm. go. Right? What would you say is the best piece of advice you've given and received? I think the best piece of advice I've ever given is no one is going to know what you're capable of beside you. Mm -hmm. Like you can't, um, just like you said, people are going to put me in a box. People thought I wasn't, I don't know what people thought I was going to do with my life, but I said, you know, I wanted to model. I wanted to be in a magazine. I want to do this, whatever. Like, you know, I made millions of dollars. Like I did this all by my fucking self because I said I could and I knew I could. Mm -hmm. I can do anything and you can do anything if you actually believe it and you're willing to work for it. And I think the universe really like keeps score. So you might not have the dream job that you want today, but are you prepared for it if it came? Because you could probably be, you know, improving your health. You could maybe be improving your mind, your patience, your everything there's so many things that you can be doing to show the universe that you're ready so when that opportunity comes you're you know it's there Mm -hmm. 
I just think that there are no limitations. Like, don't allow people to put limitations on you because they are stupid. And they're doing mm-hmm. that for their own self-interest. They're doing that for their own projections. It has nothing to do with you. Yeah. Who you know? told you, who gave you the advice, eat an elephant one bite at a time? My um, One of my financial advisors, actually. Wow. I get stressed out a lot. I have, um, I actually have an anxiety disorder. And so I get freaked out. Everything seems really big. And I also... I used to think in a way that anything that can go wrong will go wrong for me. And that was really, really unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Because you can't control anything outside of your control. You can only control your actions, your thoughts. And mm-hmm. if your thoughts go into, I can't help myself, you definitely find yourself helpless. And I can feel you can feel that emotion just kind of like grow. Yeah. You got to like one bite at a time, your problems. And, um, but also I've been doing, so I, a little backstory about my last year in life but the last four months or so I finally paid for a a very expensive therapist and I had put it off I'd gone to therapy when I was in a terrible relationship a few times but I'd never gone by myself Mm -hmm. and so I finally went and I've been attending therapy for the last few months and I thought um I thought that if I could get my mind working better that my work would be better and everything else in my life might improve and I was 100% right in that assumption. Mm. But um, I thought if I've spent my whole life being very, very anxious, there's nothing that is stopping me from doing the opposite and going to radical happiness or radical optimism. And so instead of saying, don't be anxious, I'm giving myself a new task and I'm saying, be a radical optimist. So think everything's gonna work out for you. Like totally flip yeah. that switch. So instead of saying, don't do this, I'm changing my own mind and doing radical happiness, radical optimism. And so that's what I've been working on the last month or so. I love that. That's yeah. amazing. Just changing your thought process because your thoughts are so powerful. And also when you were saying about the universe, I know you're a person who has vision boards mm-hmm. and a house, 1.2 million. Oh, but a house. A oh yeah, my first, that was my goal list. Yeah, your first goal. So mm-hmm. I want to talk about that because I know you have a house. I do. Yeah. How long have you been in the house is it everything you dreamed of is it the house from your vision board it's actually the goal was that Mm -hmm. and um (laughs) my very first house that i toured with the realtor was perfect it was 1.2 something but i got a little nervous it was right when the pandemic started so Mm -hmm. it was march my vision board was april Mm -hmm. and so i was like oh shit first of all who buys the first house and then I did. <laughs> well, you know what? If you manifest, but right, it was my it vacation comes. house. Also, it wasn't my like forever home. It was my vacation house. But yes, but I think and you're <laughs> like me. I feel like if you have a plan, you pick the universe giving it to you right off the bat. Like for some people like us, that makes sense. Yeah, it was actually the second one I looked at, though. It works. So I, I can see the appeal of walking in and be like, oh, right. this, this is like, this, this is, is in my budget and this is what I want to do. And yeah, I get it. bam. And who wants to shop and be stressed about their heartbreaks with the house? But yeah. But so the first one, I was like, you know what? Not yet. And I spent the year getting even more reorganized with my finances. And I shopped again the next year. And I found the perfect house. It's even more expensive than the vision board. So it's Uh much bigger, much nicer. And my house is just, I don't, I don't show it off enough, but I think that's kind of tacky, you know? Mm. I don't know where the line is. I want to show everyone where it's designed. Yeah. But I... But I feel like it's, I don't know. I want to show everyone because it's like a piece of you art You should. You should be proud of it. You've worked so hard for it. But mm. I see what you're saying where you don't want to be like, look at where I live. Yeah. But, you know, but it's also like, yeah, look at what you can do. You can start out after college bartending $3,000 to your name, struggle yeah. for a bit and end up here. Like, I think that's a great story to tell <laughs> people to have those positive yeah. things come to fruition. You're right. I think when it's full, it's almost done being designed on the inside, but when it's uh, finally just staged correctly, you maybe have to I'll do share. a house tour. I know. I don't know why I'm so nervous, but it's very, my house is very romantic. It's not like, it's not like what most people buy these days. It's, um, it's got a lot of charm. It's very feminine. The structure of it is just unique and it's full of flowers and life and, you know, every window looks like a painting. I love that. Yeah. I really lucked out in that yeah. department. Yeah. No, you should be so proud. You have worked for this and a house tour definitely needs to happen in the future. Thanks. Yeah. I need to work on uh, my narcissism a little bit. Why, what, what makes you say that? All right. Like maybe you just need to up it a little bit because before, you know, narcissists are kind of 
the pathological ones can be very dangerous to other right. people. Correct. But a healthy dose of being full of yourself is sometimes good. Mm -hmm. And I think my I've let it go a little too low. Like I need to fill it up a little more. Yeah, you definitely need to have a little bit of that in there because it also helps you with your conversations to yourself. It's like, no, yeah. I do deserve this. I'm going to get this. Yeah. yeah, but especially in this world we're in, when we're in the public eye, you have millions and millions of followers. People are judgmental. So I feel like we always have to second guess the things that we put out publicly because what are we going to get back when yeah. in reality we shouldn't give a fuck yeah but you do and if we were true narcissists we wouldn't yeah yeah but we we everyone in this but room we care. cares yeah. about other people yeah. and we even like make ourselves lesser or we don't want to show our achievements off that because part. we mm -hmm. really don't want to we don't want to make someone else feel a type of way right but really mm -hmm. you deserve to be happy yeah congratulations on the house thanks yeah, yeah. thanks and i will help you with your gym Oh, 100%. please do. Yeah, I want to build a garage gym. I'm going to be so excited. Ooh. Yeah. I'm committed to building a garage gym. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I and I have all of it like all the plans, but I need the stuff, like the equipment. So you, you know who Yeah, I was going to say, you know who has a really good at-home gym is Tom Sandoval. Oh, I saw the video. He's yeah. Got, he's got like a fun little so he built it. His is in one of the spare rooms upstairs. Uh -huh. And then and then I tried I was like, we went in there. He's got his plasma screen, his treadmill set up, the <sighs> the tonal and everything which is it's a great perfect setup and then we moved and i was like honey i'm gonna we got the treadmill i'm gonna make this gym in our garage not the same appeal because we got low ceilings we got a car <laughs> in there it's like so but it's it a lot of work we'll yeah. make it work wait can i ask a, a scoop can one yeah. can you guys do like the mtv cribs Ooh. i want to see all the casts of vanderpump on mtv cribs because you guys have fireplaces like that would be fun. Yeah. Please, that's me requesting this into the universe. Put all <laughs> well, maybe cribs. we could just do, if it's not an MTV crib version, we could just do a YouTube crib right? version where yeah. on Sheena's YouTube, YouTube channel, cribs. we mm -hmm. go around and we check out their cribs. Yeah. That'd be fun too. That'd be fun. Yeah. 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 Because they brought it back and they're showing people. I'm like, I'd love to see your guys' spots. Yeah. And sadly, a few cast members aren't in their homes anymore, but there are still some good houses that we could show. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking wrong. Okay. So I had some people ask about your calendar. Mm -hmm. Are we still doing the calendars? Is there a 2023 one? What can we expect? You guys, I literally am not doing one. Wah, wah, wah. I know, it's so sad. Aww. And why? it was kind of disappointing. Well, you know why? It was, um, like I said, the last few months I started with a therapist, realized how anxious I was as a person. And when you do a calendar, you kind of have to have it shot and done in like October. Mm -hmm. And I put the stylist, the sets, the I do all the edits, I do all the work. I'm even the shipper, like I'm in charge of the shipping, and oh, I wow. run all of that to get. You know, I run yeah, it because that's it's easy. a lot. Yeah, and I just once I realized the toll that being highly stressed was actually taking on my body, I thought no, and. It's uh, it doesn't mean that there aren't new things coming, but I kind of wanted to. I think sometimes you got to stop something if you want to open up the universe for other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to make sure you know I'm having fun. Everything I'm doing is fruitful, and it just wasn't the time for a calendar. Yeah, but I, I'm hopeful in that. That means that bigger and better more awesome things are coming next year well yeah tv show i hear yeah i'm attached to i'm a i have a series regular role on a show called paper empire that we've been filming in miami congratulations thank you we have a like a really fun classic cast on the show um and who denise richards is a part of the show actually. no way yeah and she looks amazing. That. I've seen some of the edits and they're fire yeah and then i have a movie coming out next month called alone at night uh -huh. um, we're in select theaters and on demand January 23rd. And that has a great cast too. g Easy, Winnie Harlow, Pamela Anderson, Paris Hilton's in the wow. movie. Yeah, and I got to act alongside Paris. That's so sick. exciting. Yeah, it was really fun. How fun is that? Yeah, so I'm hoping when, you know, some doors close, other ones open. Yeah, screw the calendar. We got yeah. TV and film. Yeah, and, I, and I'll hit you back. On, I'll hit you back on like the, you know, once it's all organized and it's yeah. easier for me, I'll give you another one for sure. But this is that that grind mode where definitely mm -hmm. what is going on with the podcast? Same thing. Just kind of on pause. Yeah, same mm -hmm. thing. And I know that's not fun. I feel like we're in this era where everything is what are you doing? Instant gratification, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But I really do think any real artists like I think there are years when you're you're writing the script and I think there's years when you're on the stage mm -hmm. and I really did a big year of character development, mind, body, soul, team, 
all of it. So I don't feel so guilty about uh, putting things on. Putting things on pause is actually, I think, me growing into who I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And not just doing everything I can at once. I think it's letting the universe kind of give it to me when it goes in the right way. And it gives you time to kind of water that garden and whatever it is, whatever business it is. And it gives you opportunities to do other things yeah and so that's a great is it who's your therapist because this she's is, great right no, they, 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 I know. They, what you're dropping life. right now is a great for a lot of people to listen like we don't have to be doing something Mm-mm. to be progressing in life yeah. we don't have to be successful and here here and here and then keeping up with like you know keeping up with the joneses it's such like a misbelief and it li- really takes a toll on your mental health yeah where you're trying and to your body where the, where mm-hmm. the expectation is Hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing X, Y, and Z, Z. It's just kind of like, I'm just grinding. Like, yeah. that's it. And, and that's all I'm going to say. I'm not, I'm not thriving here and there. But understanding that it's time, you don't always have to be delivering a new calendar. You don't have to be delivering a new project. You know, because sometimes projects don't work. And I think if yeah. we can be more comfortable talking about the failures yeah. with your friends, then it's, just, then it's just therapeutic for you to have better relationship with your friends. But having those conversations of just like, oh, yeah, I'm actually struggling with this. You yeah. Know? Is there a project you've done, a product you've put out, or something that's just totally tanked? No, that's thank good. God. That's yeah, good. thank God. No, yeah, yeah, nothing's been a tank. Yeah. Things have been fun. Um, you know, a lot of this year too. It's been I manage my OnlyFans page too, which is kind of a mm-hmm. huge page. Yeah, and that is a big thing. And my sales have gone up like crazy this year because I focused on something that oh, was yeah. fruitful and easier. And it's like this, you know, I gave up certain endorsement deals because I could make more money direct to fans instead mm-hmm. of doing the brand deals. So I'm kind of like in this middle ground. So, and even though I'm, you know, putting the podcast on pause, my next venture is buying a, you know, investment real estate property next year and mm-hmm. at the top of the year. So I was doing some finance stuff and it's just, you know, growing. Sometimes it looks like you're not doing anything, but I'm telling you, I've been like a cocoon in the the caterpillar in the cocoon. Yeah. You know? Totally. And you seem very self-aware. You know what works, what doesn't, what you can put on pause, what you need to focus on. And that's so important. So, yeah. Hell yeah. Good Thanks. for you. Thanks. Totally. How do you find dealing with, with, with like direct to fan, like only fans? Do you, re- cause you actually get to have great relationships and build these relationships with your fans. Dude. So tell, yeah. It's sick. Yeah. I f- it's so funny because being in Hollywood, I think you'd always thought like right now I got offered a model contract, like a mother agency to find me, my agent, whatever. And I'm actually in an amazing position where I'm like, do I even want to focus my time on that? Do mm-hmm. I even want to go help build someone else's brand by modeling for it or do that? Because I have this amazing, authentic, organic fan base, you know, and I didn't have rich parents. I don't have a sexy husband who's, you know, finessing the situation. I didn't, I'm not, I might not be every brand's fantasy, but I'm man's fantasy and I've got this huge thing that is real and that I built. (laughs) You know, back in the day, like a lot of the, like Anna Nicole and like uh, Pamela Anderson, you Mm -hmm. know, it wasn't this, I had a, you know, I had this in. They were just natural, raw talent. Talent. Yeah. And I feel like I've had, I've liked my followers and my people because we have this kind of relationship where that's what we've grown to be, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's fun. See, if I was working, if I had a narcissism that I was trying to up, uh-huh. I would say that better, but that was even so uncomfortable for me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, you were fidgeting, my- you were yeah. moving around saying it. I'm like, like ah. is it okay to say that it's awesome? Yeah. yeah. No, no think, absolutely. Think- be proud of what you do. Yeah. You have provided this beautiful life for yourself Thanks. and you should be so proud. It's a, it's, it's a lot of so work still. Work. And if people anything, don't get that. No, and I feel like if my story, you know, if I do great things in life, which I plan on, I like the idea that we're going to go back and be like, yeah, she moved here with three grand and this was all real. And mm-hmm. these are all real followers and no one helped her ass out. And yeah. so, you know, yeah. I like it. It's kind of edgy. Yeah. So I'm just going with it. No, I agree. M. Ann wants to know, as a woman with a curvy body myself, she said, do you find dating harder too? And do you have any tips? God. Oh God. Well, <laughs> that's that, that that in itself was just like a that's like pulling a string and unraveling many many questions in there. No, the, look, great question, but dating is trash for everyone involved. It mm-hmm. does not matter what you look oh. like. It doesn't matter if you're the hottest chick in the room, the curviest, no, you know, flat chested, whatever. Dating is trash. It mm-hmm. is hard. It doesn't matter. You can't be good enough to um 
be absolved for any of the dating problems. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's no way out of it. It is just hard. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what you it's look so like. Hot. It's the hardest part about it is you're dealing with humans. And that's that's the nuts and bolts of it, really. And he, Speaking of yeah. humans, Gina underscore Sotil <laughs> said, what is it like being one of the best humans on the planet? Boom. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So Damn. What is it like? Lonely? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, no, it's good. It's fun. I'm having a, I'm in this like, uh, I'm fully single right now, speaking of dating. And it's kind of nice not waking up and having anyone hit me up. Like mm-hmm. I have no good morning, good night text. It's fun. I feel alive a little bit. Yeah. You know, I don't mind it. Yeah. Good. I love that. So let's go. Let's talk a little bit more about the fun side of living this life of being in LA. And you mentioned it earlier, a couple of high profile exes. Oh, yeah. We've seen the parties. Mm-hmm. Tell us about the experiences. Like, how, what is that like to kind of like be able to, be, to go to these events and to be around it? What, like, first off, hitting golf balls into neighbors, into neighbors' got backyards. Mm-hmm. But what else? What <laughs> else are like some fun stories that like some fun moments when you like pinching moments? I have them all the time with Sheena where I realize like we get to have this experience and mm-hmm. we're filming. For example, last year we had our own Coachella. Went to the Polo Fields grounds and had our own little mini festival. That was fun. Mm-hmm. And it, it and was it, so fun. And it's just like cool pinch me moments where I'm just like, wow, this is very blessed, very honored. Do you have many, many top of mind ones outside of making two grand from a backyard ball? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, God, that was a good one. But um, I think, you know, when I dated Dan, those those moments were really big because I moved to L.A. and he was the first person I met here. So it was guys meet? At the Playboy Mansion. Oh, it was one of those nights. Mm-hmm. I had known like one person here. I go to Warwick. I meet a stranger. And the day of the Halloween party, they say, we can get you in. Meet us at the Roosevelt Hotel and like wear a costume. And so I go buy a pitchfork and double horns and I'm wearing like black underwear. And I go to the Playboy Mansion for the first time. And I met Dan Bilzerian. And then that night I saw Dan's house and I was in a Rolls Royce that had like a zebra rug. And like, uh, it, and, and Blue Jay Way, just seeing the first like mega mansion kind of, you know, very expensive yeah. house, shocking. Yeah. Like that is just so, I'm from Louisiana. I'm not even from a place where rich people are around. Like yeah. we don't know anyone. <laughs> like it's not like that at all. So that, those kind of rock star moments and, you know, meeting the celebrity. Mm-hmm. Dan was around a ton of celebrities and brought a lot of fun. Yeah. I don't even know. I mean, there's just so many to start, but some of them I can't even tell you about because they're late night mm-hmm. and naughty. Yeah. But Playboy Mansion, <laughs> you always meet someone at the Playboy Mansion. Really? Yeah. I guess I never had that moment before. I did. I used to work all those parties. <sighs> See, okay. By the way, I was thinking of things to like talk to you guys about. Yeah. I would love to do like a Sheena flashback uh like where we heard all your fun stories because I feel like you'll casually just mention like, oh yeah, and I this was with John Mayer and then this was with so and so, and I'm like, I want to hear all these stories. I was playing poker one last year. We were filming poker. Oh my god! And I was. Have you watched the movie, uh, the TV show back in the day, in, Housewives? Well, there was the TV was show called? Desperate Housewives. Desperate Housewives. Remember I that know, but yeah. And then there's that the John pool Tucker guy, must John die. John Tucker, the guy from yeah. John Tucker, pool guy. Yeah. So we're sitting down, and I was like, oh, this, I've seen this guy on TV before. Like, I'm like, I don't know anybody from left and right, and so. I was seeing playing poker and he's like, oh, how do you know everybody here? I'm like, oh, I met the Toms through my my, my uh, fiance, you know? And then he was like, oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, she's pretty cool. It's all right. She didn't date too many legends before me. Like she set the bar really low with the dude she was dating. And then, and then it turned out that he was one of them. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. And you know what's funny is literally yesterday we moved the rest of our stuff from our San Diego house to Palm Springs and to Marina Del Rey. And I'm going through these boxes and I found the Marc Jacobs sunglasses that he bought me back in 2007. Wait, you dated John Tucker Must Die? Yeah. <laughs> Who else have you dated? This oh is Oh my amazing. God, so many. I've thought about, do I write a little black book? Do I, when I write <laughs> yes. a book one day, do I talk about the early Hollywood days? But then I'm like, I'm a mother now. The ho- Hollywood I'm days. I'm my Hollywood days. You know, I'm a wife. Like, I don't know if that's inappropriate, but girl, I got some stories. Yeah, I would love to hear all the stories. <laughs> well, when you bring back the podcast, I'll come okay. tell them. There okay, you go. now I have to. <laughs> Pressure. <laughs> So speaking of businesses and things that you have been doing, let's get that away from me back in Hollywood and talk about a business you have here in LA and that's Sugar Taco. Yeah, we love Sugar Taco. Love Sugar Taco. I hear that there are a couple more locations opening. There are. 
But um, I'm not. Uh, the next one is Long Beach. That's yes, the next one on the T. But I don't know if I'm allowed to even say the next one because they haven't posted it yet. So I don't oh, want to break the news. Okay. But we just had a meeting um, yesterday, and there's another one in the works. Yeah. But Sugar tacos on and popping. It is. It's so good. It really is so good. It's nice to have somewhere that's family friendly, plant based, mm -hmm. and even our Ventura location. It's perfect for the little ones because we have this little, little like play kid, area, the kid play area, yeah. and the moms love it because they're like, oh my god, like there's not a lot of you know there's, there's not a lot, lot of restaurants play. like that. No, no, they're and that's crazy if you think about it. Yeah, yeah, because because we, we we missed a generation. I remember when we were little, we used to be able to go and play in some play pens and all that. Yeah, but, we used to go to McDonald's and like fly off the slides. Like, yo, th those were epic in there. I was. We I know. Even oh my god, the we McDonald's. Go I would still go back. But what? When did they even secretly take those all away? When they realized, like, <laughs> oh, we don't people that have yeah. kids to stay home. We'll just leave that like that. Then fine. Were we all asleep one night and like Santa Claus just came and took all the play places? Like, right? I just feel like I don't remember when they were taken. There was no news break about it. No. Now that I think about it, I'm Shady. picturing the one that I grew up going to and. Yeah, that's gone. Just like we got like a Men in Black like flash. Like there were these. Like, yeah, corporate, corporate were America. they actually even there? Yeah, it I was don't like know. corporate America. They're like, oh, so that location there and that property right there makes no revenue as opposed to this property. So we'll just expand the restaurant and get rid of the playpen. That's that's what happened. But unfortunately, <laughs> we can stick with the Men in Black story too. Yeah, yeah. We must have been in like middle school or something, just not paying attention, right? Has Wait, it we been that playing. long? We, you guys got too cool for playing in the playpens, and then you realize that they weren't there anymore. Yeah, then like technology comes around and. It's like, do you want to go on the slide or do you want your iPhone? Your virtual slide on the you know? iPhone. Yeah. Woo. Seriously. Crazy. Um, Speaking of celebrities then, do you have any kind of celebrity crush or someone you'd like to bump into one day and be like, oh, hi, how are you? No. Me neither. I've never had one. No. Never no. Really? Had one. Do you? Well. Do you, honey? Yeah. Um. I no, mean, my, mine would all be like women I look up to. Like, I always yeah. wanted to meet all of the Kardashians and people oh, like fine. that. And then I've ended up at events at NBC Universal, like upfront events mm -hmm. or certain things. And then she's on the red carpet and then I'm on the red carpet. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's fun. But <laughs> yeah, so I've met a lot of people like that. But I don't know that I necessarily have a crush. Interesting. Yeah, that's a funny question. Run out you. Ever, I have a crush. It's the I rock. was going to add that. You in do? The, yeah, that's the rock. Your oh, my oh, God. Yeah. But I have this hot take, too. You know how everyone thinks Pete Davidson is dating all the hotties? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who else is like his age and sh like single, single Rolling and through. straight and single? Yeah, and has that type of Rolodex really? Like He's I like, just oh. don't know. I'm like, who are all the available dudes? I don't know if I'm missing something. They got locked down. Mm -hmm. They got locked. They got they're locked married. Down. We got locked down real quick. Yeah. I really do feel like though Hollywood has kind of skipped some of our ages. Like I feel like there's all those. They're the people that were in Hollywood. 10 years ago they're still doing every mm -hmm. role and then there are tiktok kids that, yeah well, and i just feel like there's a huge gap of people that's gonna our be age. the new that's the new hollywood like you're gonna see movies and you already see them now mm -hmm. of these influencers and creators creating their own movies they're not even going for acting is the you would thing. hope so but then like the, the people they cast for stuff sometimes they pick the people who are just i don't know i feel like sometimes the people casted in certain roles are just totally off yeah these days yeah it's just it's well there's also if you look at the movie market like people don't really it's that how many hits do we get to watch anymore True. You're, just, you're just watching turnover they just need people they, True. you're on netflix you watch the stupidest movies now yeah. but you just watch it you're like oh this is what it is and that's kind of expected for the chase of attention they've gone for more more volume as opposed to quality and then you still wait for those quality but yeah. i mean we waited 10 years for avatar Mm -hmm. I think it's more than that. Avatar was there when the <laughs> McDonald's playgrounds were up, and right? Exactly. <laughs> like pop back up. Oh my gosh, are you still journaling? I know that's something that you've done for so long. Oh my god, yes. And I've increased my journaling. I used to journal when I would get really upset or anxious or stressed, mm -hmm. and it's an amazing relief. But I've changed that. I journal when I wake up and before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds easy, and I know a million people won't do it, but my God, like do it. Please it do is it. so. It will really help you regulate your mood. Like you check in with yourself. And I think there's something magic about putting words onto paper because I think goals come true faster. Like you feel better. It's it's similar to therapy. It is some kind of release. It's strange how the mind just needs to get it out in some way. Mm -hmm. But journaling is amazing. Like 
Amazing, 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 amazing. Mm. And free. Yeah, I started a lot when I was going through my pregnancy and I started journaling. And then towards like my third trimester, I don't know, there was a day that I kind of just stopped writing in my journal, but Mm -hmm. I still have it saved. It's in my like fireproof safe box because one day I know I'm going to want to look back on that. But I recently, I have no idea where it came from. He didn't order it. I didn't order it. Someone sent me a mental health journal. And just out of nowhere, there was no note, nothing. And I'm like... Okay, I think wow. this is a sign that I should start journaling again. Wow. And I know that you've been really big on that. And that's something I want to start doing again, too. I think it's really good. It's a really good relief. And some of the books will tell you, you know, write for 20 minutes in the morning. Hell no. You have stuff to do. Mm-hmm. Just literally write two paragraphs about how you're feeling, how you hope your day goes, and maybe being aware of like, oh, this might have bothered me earlier. But just put it out and let it... I think... It's funny, you know how when you go to therapy, everyone's like, you have to do the work. Mm -hmm. But no one ever tells you what that means. Yeah. Yeah. Like they Mm -hmm. never say what it means. So it's kind of just this obscure term. But I think, I think I've come up with what the work might actually mean in quantifiable terms. I think for me, it's meant reevaluating my past with pure honesty, like really looking back at my past and looking at it through a new lens. So it's been gathering that and then it's been implementing new ways of thinking through like mind, body and soul. So body would be changing the way I ate, you know, healthy foods, being in healthy environments, prioritizing going to bed and doing things like meditating and writing in your journal. They're they're active recovery for trauma and they're active recovery for conflict and stress. And there are these quantifiable work like things Mm -hmm. you can actually do for your brain that I think. It's, it's really a shame that not a lot of people get the benefit of therapy or get, you know, we didn't get taught mental health in school. Yeah. yeah. Because there are so many really easy ways to change your entire life that don't cost much. And journaling is fucking one. That's totally. You said. Journaling's free. And it's, and it's, yeah. and, it, and the biggest one, and, and we live in it now, it's like, well, I want results now. I want this now. And mm-hmm. I want to be helped now. And unfortunately, it's not going to happen like that. It literally takes time and it's about investing in now for wherever and I, I saw the best meme it was some old dude on instagram and he was literally like if you think healthy food's expensive wait till you get your first sick bill yes. right oh well on that note yep you know like 95 percent of they say all ill like most illness the biggest uh precursor or factor is stress right mm-hmm. my god so we're doing all these things to work out our body and eat healthy but we haven't we haven't thought like let me go readjust my mind a little bit yeah, it's really important because there are, there are even these conditions like fibromyalgia that stems from psychological issues and people have debilitating pain in life and you don't know when that's going to come on and you really don't want to cut your life early short or maybe cut um, the quality of your life early yeah. short if you can help it mm-hmm. and maintain maintaining a healthy mind is just so much more important than I think a lot of us have been taught. Um, I had another thought, but I totally lost it. I do well, that I do, all the time. I think I definitely agree because, and the best part is, is a lot of people are talking about it. It mm-hmm. is like the hot topic of mental health is a, is a buzz button. And you know what? It should stay a buzz button because that's the best part of being, about being a parent is I remember how I was raised. Mm-hmm. Love my mom. I'm not going to judge at all. And we've all had different, but now we know better. And now we can actually try and handle these situations that we put our kids in and that they put themselves in and let them you know, self-learn and, and all, all of love, but we really get to have the best of that knowledge of understanding what that actually means, how it will impact them mentally. And then that will grow faster and hopefully we can just do our best. And we're all doing our best, but yeah. I'm glad that the buzz button right now is mental health because yeah. it is a real thing. And it's I do think, thing. honey, with a homebody, I know you guys right now are trying to focus on like training programs and stuff like that. But now just that we're sitting here and talking about mental health and whatnot, I feel like that can be another angle with the influencers and people you get on is just maybe, you know, what? doing a live that's a check-in on a mental health like something like that Ooh. i feel like could be Fun really check-ins. beneficial that's interesting. Too. Yeah. love that yeah, you know little, little so you're talking about like oh we'll creators. do weekly check-ins with the training programs and this and that but it's like how is your mental you know not just physical i think that you can take homebody to a different level by not just focusing on physical health and also i guarantee you nine out yeah. of ten mm. influencers you get on this have struggled or are struggling with or know someone struggling with mental health, if not all 10. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's interesting. Maybe we can even look into that mental health aspect for the new year. I mm-hmm. like that, Bob. Even yeah. workouts that are like restorative. 
Yeah. Uh, or like, you know, there are no period workouts or like workouts for women when they're on their period. Right. And I'm like, I would love something gentle but active. Yeah. Nothing out there. Like nothing. Really? Not that I know See, of. Because like in yeah. my space, I, I, we understand like you got to train differently during that. So when we talk to our clients, when we that's interesting. It'd be nice if something was just, you know, kind of uh, branded like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it makes you know it makes me feel good when I put on that stupid lotion from the store that says stress relieving lotion. It doesn't relieve my stress, but, but I like the lie, yeah you placebo. Know? I, I, I like the placebo, right? Yeah. I do. I, like, <laughs> I love stuff like that. Yeah. All right, I want a rapid fire. Okay. I'm okay. What are you most passionate about? Ooh, um, I think just being a decent human. Mm-hmm. I like being a decent human. I wish other people liked it as much as well. <laughs> <laughs> best book you've read? The best book I've read? Oh, I love Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. I thought that that was a really helpful book about reframing uh, how you think about money. But Why I Don't Write was a fiction one that I love. It's just dark and weird. Okay. Red flag. What's your biggest red flag? Shit. Ooh, there's so many to choose from. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, talking shit about your ex, no point. You know, if someone talks shit about their ex in a way that is derogatory and not just, if they have nothing good mm-hmm. to say about them, usually not a good sign. <laughs> yeah. You know? Interesting. You know? Yeah. When you think about no, the that's a good you point. have with an ex and you kind of like. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Biggest pet peeve. Ooh, being negged. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you put, and that in a, put that in a context for me. It's uh, when someone gives you a compliment designed to undermine your self esteem to where you're put. You have to kind of build yourself up. So they'll say, for example, "You're so smart for a blonde," or mm-hmm. "You sound really articulate from being a girl from Louisiana." It's just this really dumb power play and dyna- it's a manipulative mm-hmm. behavior. But um, I hate when someone even tries to manipulate me because I can clock in, I can read it, and I'm like, not only are you doing this, you think I'm stupid and, and you, you don't th- respect you, me. Yeah. So you just hit me twice and I hate you. Yeah. Hate it. The backhanded compliments. Oh. You're so much prettier in person. It's like, thank you, I think. Yeah. Uh, that Rude. Was, I feel like that's nice because like. Yeah, but it's like, but so you, I'm not pretty on the show? No, well, you also have <laughs> breakdowns over penguins. You know what I mean? Whatever. <laughs> Wait, I like breakdowns over penguins. <laughs> I like that. I'm here for it. I like hey, it. Hey, it was much for that, charity, okay? Yeah, I who's like out it. here crying over a penguin? I like how much you're willing to love. So I think that, that is fucking dope. That is rare. That is a real personality trait that more people should get behind. Like I'm loving behind too it. much. You know what I mean? I'm behind it. Who's we, out here I, loving too much? When we first yeah. started dating, we we're in Australia. She flew over and we went to the Australia Zoo. What did I do? I thought it'd be cute to buy tickets. And on the checkout, they gave me a little upsell. They're like, would you like to buy the, uh, would you like to sponsor? Adopt a koala. Adopt a koala. I was like, fucking of course I want to do that. <laughs> adopt a koala. I was like, hey, honey, I adopted a koala. The funny thing is, I didn't know about this penguin situation. Mm-hmm. So here we are just adopting the world animals for love. So mm-hmm. Wait, that I get is, it. That is honestly so romantic yeah. to think about it, that the universe like paid it forward for you in that way. Right? Because no. I never got to meet the penguin, no, but I got to hug the koala. What was the koala's that name That makes again? you want to cry. That's cute. What was her name? Sounded I want to like, say Claire, but I think that's that's Summer's toy Carol? is Claire the koala. Yeah, it was something like that. But anyway, it's, Sandy, a, fu- it's a funny... I didn't know about it until we came back to Australia and yeah. it became a thing. And I was like, no, wait, that's show me universe. that scene. And then I saw the scene and you were crying mm-hmm. with who? Who was the old girl? Lisa, uh, Brittany's, Brittany's grandma? Mama. Mama. <laughs> yeah, me and Mama. Listen. I love that when you're going through the breakup and like the most random person is consoling you. Yeah. And you'll just be crying to a stranger and it's like, thank God you're here. I know, right? <laughs> no, no one else is here for me right now, but Mama's here. <laughs> that, was that, and that was, I think, my bigger problem in, when I came into the picture. I was like, if Sheena says the roof, the sky is red, it's red. Mm-hmm. I'll fight you for it because mm-hmm. she deserves that because she gives everybody else all that B- She deals with everyone else's BS and it got me in trouble often. Makes me arguing with the girls on the show, which is fine. But I realized this season, bite my tongue, I shouldn't be raising my voice and I got to count to three or 10. But still, <laughs> I got your back, honey. Fuck it. Thanks, honey. That's- I love that. Yeah. That makes me think it exists. It keep does. That, keep that up. It does. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it, boys. Step up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to give up. What would you say is your best quality and what is your worst? Oh, that's tough. Uh, my best quality, I think, is my quick wit. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sharp. I Yo, can figure you out are a problem. Sharp yep. as, you're sharper than attack. Oh, thanks. Yeah. 
I think, yeah, I like the, I think I'm quick-witted. My worst quality definitely was my crippling anxiety. Mm -hmm. I had a very, very anxious mind. So I'm going to always actively be trying to get over that. But I really do think that this therapy has changed my life, as cheesy as that sounds. Yeah, no, it does. I think the way that I'm thinking is totally going to change um, everything yeah so hopeful. and I think as we enter into the new year everyone needs to check in with each other be kind you know know that mental health is real ask people how they're doing and mm-hmm. just you know it's so important that we're here for each other because you never know from the outside you may see someone on Instagram who looks like the happiest person in the world but you never really know what someone's struggling with so just as we enter the new year, be, be a kind. kind human, period. Oh, yeah. Treat others people with respect how you'd like to be treated. And if you want to be treated like shit, keep that to yourself. <laughs> yeah, or go find each other. Yeah, like just yeah. keep that in a hole because no one else wants to be treated like shit. So it's, don't do it. I this The past few months I've been doing this homework, learning about NPD and other personality disorders. And um, it really changed how I viewed the world because there truly are people who believe in a hierarchy of people. They believe that some have more worth than others. They believe that to their core. And they also, you know, there are also people who are sadistic and there are also people who suffer with psychopathy. And they're, so it's beyond um, like, you know, people having a bad day. There are these people who, their minds aren't healthy Period. in such a way that it causes, you know, devastating harm to individuals and communities and in relationships. I think everyone also besides their self work has to learn about that and those things Mm -hmm. because a lot of our celebrities, a lot of our politicians, um, there are a lot of people who are very sick minded Mm. and, and it's quantifiable. It's obvious. And we gotta, we gotta figure out, I think it's good to know what we're dealing with. What's a good place for someone of this is including myself. How can I start going down that path of exploration or understanding that? What would you recommend a good book to read or a good practice for me to figure that out real quick? I love, I just read uh, The Narcissist in Your Life. It was pretty basic, but it was a very, I, I'll also get on these educational holes where I just Google just, shit nonstop. But The Narcissist in Your Life was really helpful. Um, Walking on Eggshells is my next read. It's about bipolar disorder. Um, I'm also reading The Drama of the Gifted Child. It's about growing up in a, I think it's about growing up in a difficult environment, but having a, you know, a gift or being highly intelligent in a tough environment and how that plays out in adulthood. At least that's what I've heard it's about. But yeah, I read a lot. You should Yo. reading is powerful. I man. know. Yeah, I need to read more. I read a lot. I love reading actually. I it's, wish I did. Have, like, do you have like a read list where people can go and see check out your read list? No, but I should. You, you, should, you should, really, should make one. Do because, like an Amazon list yeah. where it's like your top books because that you, you can, read. Because everyone that listens to, including myself, I'm like, wait, wh- it's very it's very empowering to hear you speak about topics and it's like wow you really have taken the time how do i follow suit so mm-hmm. i would recommend that because i would definitely go on an amazon list and find out what you read yes yes they have this site called goodreads they said it's like a social reading there club thing okay we'll see but yeah yeah i love reading there's so much oh my god i don't know what it is there's magic in reading and writing the way that you absorb the information it it just is different in the mind it definitely because I mean when you once you leave college once you leave high school you stop educating yourself you stop trying to and then mm-hmm. to be honest I've really the last two years especially being out of business and just being at home I've really like I felt like I'm actually want to go back to learning again I just want to be cognitively challenged yeah because I'm not doing it from day to day I promise you that and it's yeah. and especially bringing it in social media you're there swiping and all of a sudden you know what what's going on so I think that would be my New Year's goal is to get dial into reading and just Ooh. and just focus on that mm-hmm. so i'm gonna go into some of your reads thanks for that yeah you'd love that i feel like because there's so much self-help stuff and a lot of books are written by men like you'd love and atomic habits have you read i've that? read atomic habits great yeah. the secrets of the millionaire mind that's you definitely I'm gonna, read that but one. that's on the list i haven't read but, that one yeah the 5 a.m club is more motivational but there's yeah, a 5 a.m club i've done 5 did you read club. that it's one not fun. it wasn't <laughs> anything like oh you've <laughs> actually, like, yo, you've actually yo, lived I'm it like, yo, i haven't read, read the full of them and i've got like the cliff notes of 5 a.m club and then i just put into expert i was like yeah this is awesome and then for me my biggest problem right now is figuring out self-love for myself doing it for me because i've always been an athlete i've always done it for my team since the age of 16 when i got introduced into sport it was never about me it was about doing it doing the right thing for other people in my in my team and that has become a really it's i'm trying to become a civilian like i take my hat off to all my clients that would get up in the morning and work out they did it because they wanted to get it done before work. And it was just like, wow. And I, and my biggest, that's my biggest problem right now. The last two years, 
to be stuck in that rut of like I'm not doing it for myself, I'm doing it for my family, but I got to mm. figure out how to do it just for me. Oh yeah. If I can water my garden, because yeah. I can water everybody else's garden every all day, every day. I can do that. I'm, that's what I'm really good at doing. But then when it comes to like the self love. Yeah, my daughter's going to grow up and she's going to hear these lessons I try and teach her and she'll be like, well, what the fuck happened to you, dad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I remind myself, I'm like, oh, I gotta, like, if I create this monster, I got to be the monster too. So. Yeah, yeah. So you read a lot of books. Would you ever write a book? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I definitely think that's going to happen Hell at yeah. some point. I have, I actually have a plot and an outline at home. I have two done and I write poems a lot. That's something I like to do for fun. Nice. But I definitely think that will happen. Okay. So so I know we've got TV show, we've got movies, we've got mm -hmm. so much in the works for you. Anything else coming up that we can look forward to? God, I don't know. Hopefully something great. Just everyone manifests. Life, yeah, yeah, everyone manifests. I might sign this agency contract and just start doing some serious modeling. Back. You know, I kind of miss the the industries type stuff. I feel like the last few years with COVID, we all got really independent. Yeah. And I kind of miss the Hollywood shit. I'm, I'm like, I'm missing, you know, strangers at photo shoots. I don't know. So yeah. we'll see, but fingers crossed. But everyone say a prayer. Yeah. Keep me away from these fuck boys. Let's add that into the prayer as well. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here, getting into some shenanigans with us yet again. This has been so fun. Thank you guys for having me. Yes. We're, Thank you. I'm so excited for the show. Yeah. I can't wait. Oh, it's gonna it's coming soon. Yeah, oh, we, we're we, ready. We've got to wait for that Season release date. 10. Definitely. Coming soon. Tell everyone where they can find you if they're not one of the nine million people already following <laughs> you. You can follow me at Lindsay Palos everywhere. 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 Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.